Now that we've already discussed and talked about the Big Bang, which is of course the formation of our universe, we're going to get a little bit smaller scale and talk about the solar nebular theory. Solar, of course, talking about the sun, right? And nebula is the first stage of a star formation. So this is really a theory about the formation of both our star, the sun, and planets together. So this is a theory all about how our solar system came to be all of these bodies down here, how they formed. And actually we're going to find out that they all formed together. All planets formed at the same time from the same cloud as the star. And when we say cloud, we're referring to the nebula, which is a cloud of gas and dust where all stars begin. And the estimation here is that our sun, along with our planets, formed all together in one unit right around 5 billion years ago. Okay, so we're talking Big Bang almost 14 billion years ago. 10 billion years later, our solar system was formed. Okay, now within this formation, we've got three simple steps to kind of talk about. The first one is the initial nebula, the cloud of gas and dust. And that cloud of gas and dust began to contract. Okay, so what we're thinking here is that all this material started to come together because of one major force we know as gravity. Gravity started to attract all those particles. No matter how small they are, they still have a gravitational force. And as those particles started to contract, it also began to flatten out. And we can see that a little bit more here in the second picture with step two. Now we have a really thin disk of gas and dust that remains. And that thin disk is continually revolving around that star that is forming in the middle. The star really starts to ignite. And this is when the sun was born. So the cloud and gas of cloud of gas and dust began to contract together, gravity pulling all the particles in, and it started to flatten out. Once it started to flatten out, we got a thin disk circulating around the star that begins to grow. But notice that not all material was brought together when that star ignited, so there was some stuff left over, and that stuff that was left over continued to circle around the sun and began to form our planets. planets accumulate from gas and dust in the disk. Okay, So as the star started to ignite and start burning and creating energy, most of the gases were pushed far away from the sun, while the rockier material stayed closer to the sun. And we start to see that separation when we look at the planets. Now before we do that, a couple pictures here. Here is an actual um, star kind of in stage two. We can see the circular sphere shape of the star forming in the middle with the disk of gas and dust being created around the outside. And we can see how over time here those tiny pieces that are remaining outside of the Sun or any star's formation start to slowly collide, collide together and accumulate becoming less and less, eventually becoming the planets and having a nice set orbit around that Sun forming in the middle. And we call those things planetesimal. It's kind of like a baby planet as it starts to form its official planet. Okay, So we do have the breakdown of two planets that uh, orbit around our sun. We have the terrestrial planets. And we call those Earth-like planets. That is where Earth falls into this category. These are all the planets that are also close to the Sun. So we have uh, Mercury up here, Venus, Earth of course, Mars. This picture also has the Moon in it. Those are our close planets. 
And then our further planets we call Jovian, or Jupiter-like planets, and that includes our outer planets, like Jupiter and Saturn. So we got four and four in the mix here. And because this is the solar nebular theory, we do have to have some evidence to support our theory. And you're looking at the evidence right here. This is the evidence, the planets and their characteristics. What we know about each one helps clues us in to how all of this stuff formed together. So in terms of the terrestrial planets, we should already know this, but they are the smaller of the two, right? They are small in both size and mass, okay? We know out of those, though, Earth is the biggest. And we also know that their surface is different than the outer planets. They have a rocky surface. So we've got smaller in size and mass and a rocky surface for the four inner terrestrial planets. As far as the outer Jovian planets go, we know they are much larger in both mass and in size. And just to give you a little bit of perspective here, that picture we just saw on the last slide with Earth, Mercury, Venus, um, and Mars is actually this same image right here. Okay, so we can see how small these guys are compared to the much larger Jovian planets, right? All of them together do not even equal the size of the smaller outer planets. The biggest difference here, other than size, is what they're made of. There's no real solid surface on these guys. You probably have heard them called before gas giants. And because they're made of gas, despite their large size, they have a much lower average density. So one way I always remember that is if we were able to put Saturn into a big bathtub, a big tub of water, it would actually float because it is so lightweight due to the fact it's made up of very light gases opposed to our terrestrial planets that are very rocky. Okay, so again, what does this have to do with the story of how all this stuff came to be? Well, what we know here is that the planets formed from the same material as the sun. Formed from the same material as the sun. And we would still see that same material found in the sun's atmosphere today. That material is still present in the composition of all parts of the solar system. The rocky planet material, so the terrestrial planets, formed a little bit differently, not so much from the sun's material, but from the clumping together, it's our official science word that we're going to use here, from the clumping together of remaining dust grains. So our planet formed from a bunch of small dust grains starting to combine together, starting out golf ball size, getting bigger, basketball, house size, town size, miles across, and as once those planetesimals formed miles across, then we started to have them collide and form more and more planets. Okay. So just a quick summary of each set of planets. This one over here, we're going to say a mass of um, less than 15 Earths. And over here, more. Right? And so that uh, meets our two planet needs, right? These are our small planets, less than 15 Earths. And these are our large planets, more than 15 Earths. So as we think about how each one formed, we know that the smaller Earth-like or terrestrial planets formed not by gravitational collapse, but by clumping, right? By all those dust grains colliding over time, becoming planetesimals and growing in size. Where our larger planets 
formed from gravitational attracting, meaning that they absorbed in through gravity a lot of the gas and leftover material from the protostellar cloud that created the sun, or from the nebula cloud that made the sun. From the nebula protostar cloud that our sun was created. These are, of course, are the Jovians. So our theory here comes full circle as we start to see the definition of these two sets of planets. These guys over here are, are terrestrial Earth-like planets, small and rocky, showing that all the material close by um, had to be that more dense material and clumped together. But the further planets, the Jovians, were able to attract those leftover gases from the solar cloud that was forming and actually become those Jovian gas giants. So as always, um, we got a couple things to complete with our notes. We do have a few summary questions, so make sure you wrap those up. And there is a few things to complete there on the right-hand side. Maybe you're going to draw in a diagram, uh, but most importantly, make sure you write in that question before you wrap up your notes.